London's Tottenham Court Road. I've been down there here a few times, spoken to Jehovah's Witnesses. I've also spoken to Scientologists, because this is where their little Dianetics and Scientology Information Center is. Not a huge place, but you can just walk in off the street and, uh, wow, it's really kitted out in there. Lots of high-tech stuff, beautifully made, cost a bit of money. Put it all together, free books, video about L. Ron Hubbard and how great he is. Well, I've spoken to two people who work in there in the reception, so I'm going to pass now to somebody who I've never spoken to before and doesn't recognize me, is sitting in there. I might just go in and play it all innocent all over again and see what they tell me about Scientology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is Dianetics. Yeah. So you are right, this is like, uh, came before Scientology. Okay. So, actually, it's about how the mind works. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's actually discovered there's a hidden part of the mind which causes all kind of problems for us, like holds us back in life. Yes. You know, we all, I don't know, self doubt or self criticism, those things where it comes from. Yeah. And it gives you a technique to handle that part of the mind. So oh, I wish I could give that to my, uh, to my mom. Right, right. Have a seat. Have a look at what it is. Is your mom like, is she... She has um, okay. problems, you know, psychological problems and all that, you know, all that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. She's been in, in and out of therapy her whole life, but it doesn't See. seem to work. Yeah. But she's 18 now, so I don't think there's much can be done. You know. yeah. Is she on medication and stuff? A loads of things. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with medication. Is because the psychotropic medication is quite a lot of side effects and stuff for the medication. Yes, yes, yeah, she sleeps all the time. She's, her voice is not as quick as it used to be. Very yeah, yeah, like dulls and down. Like, it's really, yeah. very nice. But like, like Dianetics is like it's for everyone, yeah. not just people who are like you know, need early help. But like guys who just want to be more successful in life. Yeah, that would be that would so, be like, handy. Yeah. 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 My name is Daniel, by the way. Oh. Oh, oh Mark. My name is Mark. Mark. Yeah. Mark. Okay. Nice to meet you. Are you from America or are you from? I, I grew up in the states. Yeah, I'm living at the moment just outside of London. So. Yeah. Have a seat. This is a this is a four minute introduction. Yeah. We have a, we have a twenty minute film, which is like a popcorn film, a movie film. Yeah. Which gives you um, what happens with Dianetics, especially what with the guy who has an accident. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. So, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice movie actually if you want to uh, see a cinema. This will, this will give you some of the technical things about dynamics. It's not the test. No, no. Okay. You, you, yeah, I'll, I'll get the test ready for you. Oh, sure. All right. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Do you know someone who has never been a trouble with a serious loss in life? Or a traumatic experience? And then you have a date do you sometimes experience self-doubts, negative thoughts, unreasonable fears, upsets, or irrational behavior? The painful experiences of our past clearly have an effect upon our present behavior. But to what degree and why? What causes the mind to depart from rational thought or behavior? That is the subject of Dianetics. Every moment of your life, your mind is recording everything that's happening to you. Every sight, every sound, every taste, smell, pain, emotion, touch, everything. These recordings form what is called the time track, a consecutive record of all the experiences accumulated throughout your existence. Your mind uses this information to make decisions and solve problems relating to your survival. 
the better its decisions, the better you survive. Most of this data is stored in your analytical mind, that part of your mind that thinks, remembers, and calculates. But some of your experiences are not recorded into those analytical memory banks. It is discovered in Dianetics that all of your painful experiences are stored in a previously unknown part of the mind. It's called the reactive mind. And it throws those experiences back at you in an irrational attempt to get you to avoid the same painful thing from happening to you again. Here's a simple and common example. At some point, you've probably gotten sick from eating tainted food. Later, if you see or smell or possibly even think about that particular food again, you start to feel a little nauseous. Now, you know logically the mere sight or smell or thought of the food can physically make your body ill because you haven't actually eaten it. And yet you're experiencing the same sick feeling as before. This is your reactive mind, making you re-experience the same perceptions it recorded in that earlier incident in a crude attempt to protect you from what it believes is a dangerous situation. It reacts solely on a stimulus response basis and below your awareness. The painful experiences hidden in your reactive mind are the cause of your fears, insecurities, negative thoughts, unwanted emotions, and irrational behavior. You have been accumulating these deeply buried experiences throughout your existence. In fact, the most damaging among them occurred before you were born. Dianetics reveals how these negative experiences are stored and contains a technology to free yourself from them. What would life be like if all of the pain you've experienced no longer affected your abilities, emotions, and behavior? You would think and behave rationally, making the best possible decisions relating to your survival. You would be able to utilize your imagination and creativity to their fullest. You would be confident, more intelligent, and productive, and happier. You would be yourself, free to enjoy life and reach your full potential. In short, your mind would be clear. That is the goal of Dianetics. People achieve this state every day, and so can you. Our testing is downstairs. Oh, is it downstairs? Yeah. This is a fairly old building, probably. Yes, it was. Um, it was bought actually, I think, uh, by, the, by the founder. It was uh, back in like um, the sixties. Right. Yeah. The founder. Yeah. Who was the founder? Al Ron Hubbard. Ah, uh, yes, I remember the name now. Yeah. So yes. I like my science fiction. You know. <laughs> he did, yeah. he did a bit of that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I've actually got um, a collection of his books. Because when he wrote um, pulp fiction. Yeah. He did like all like fantasy and science fiction and he did like romance and westerns and he kept these like he would write little pulp books that like um, A4 signs. Oh yeah. Little short stories of what he, when he was writing you know, for pulp fiction. Yeah, things. I know he did a lot, didn't he? A lot of pulp fiction. Yeah. 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 Oh, great, some, some great stories. Yeah. Is this like a school in here? It looks like a bit like a, a school? Similar. This is, this is really all personality and IP testing. Okay. So, um, yeah, like when people do these little dynamics, it's a reactive mind oh, yes. thing, right? Yeah. It's like when people start to learn about the mind, um, they, they start to change their life. Mm. And, you know, they find that um, I know some things are not really working too well for them. Yeah. If they understand how the mind is working, they can make these changes. Yeah. And what happens is people's IQ start rising. They become more they become smarter, they start to think quicker and think. And uh, this test actually people can do before yeah. doing the service and they do one after and they can see the improvements in other IQ or personality. Is it like you're kind of controlling your own mind instead of it controlling you? Exactly. That's exactly what the is. There's a lot of like symbols and things around here. Yeah. Quite cool. That, that, I know I've seen that with the two triangles. I've seen that somewhere. That's a triangle. Oh, oh, I can see the S now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
I can show you um, I can show you what one of the triangles no, is the 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 form of stairs there about the top now, the triangle. Okay. So, I need a top triangle about relationships. How do you, you know, if you want to improve your relationships with your friends or your colleagues and these kind of things. Yeah. That top triangle is all about um, you know, how you can do that, how you can create better relationships with your friends and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can show you, I can show you. Right. Yep, thank you very much. Do you like anything to drink or not? Um, I just had, uh, had a drink, so I'm okay. Yeah, maybe some water. Yeah, sure. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Just have a sip, yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> thank Good you very Yeah. yeah. Right, so. I'll get you started on this one. This is, a, this is the first test. Uh, you can do a three tests if you want, depending on how you're doing the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is the first one, it's a personality okay. test. Okay. You get, there's no time limit for this one, so you basically get through in your own time. Alright. Okay. So it's just multiple choice by the looks of it? Yes. The instructions are here, so read through the instructions, and then the questions will start on the next page. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> okay, I'll do my best. I don't have a lot of time, but yeah, I'll do my best. Okay. Oh. okay. Sure. See so yeah, how you go. If you were like, um, yeah, it's nice to finish it. If you don't, I can give you some questions that way with you and you can complete it at home or sure. bring it in when you're on the next time. That sounds interesting. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. 200 questions. Yeah, getting through it faster than I thought. Like, because it says, you know, don't think about it, just do it. So, yeah, it's good. It, you get sort of faster and faster. <laughs> yeah, great, thanks. Yeah, I left it down there. Okay. All right. I'll, um, I'll get a marking song. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you've seen a bit of Dianetics. Um, I can show you the story of L. Ron Hubbard and how he came to discover. Yeah, Dianetics. is that how long it'll take to, to, to mark it? Or? Uh, it, might be, it might be quicker. I'll probably get it done maybe in five minutes or so. But um, you okay. can have a look and see. Yeah. Actually, I did promise I was going to show you a triangle, eh? the top triangle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is, a, this is a very, very posh in here, isn't it? <laughs> but nice, but probably. So, um, this is what Scientologists say about what Scientology is. Yeah. And then the next one is the beliefs and practices. And in here, this is one of the triangles, this is the top one. Right, okay. Okay, so have a look at this and then go through to the beliefs and practices. Alright. Oh. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, here you go. Thank you. I started becoming a Scientologist when I was around like 17, 18. I've been for five years. 20 years. I've been a Scientologist my whole life. My parents were Scientologists. People think you're just born into a religion, but I think any kid at some point along the way has to decide either it works for them or it makes sense to them. I was attracted to Scientology really because friends of mine recommended it. And I wanted to find out more. People are so curious. It's amazing. I literally want to like have a pin that says like I'm a Scientologist. If you have questions, come and ask me. Once they see it, they actually be like, oh, Scientology, that's, I didn't know it was like that. I thought it was something else. They're like, yeah, it's not. It just helps you. That's all it does. That's what it's there for. It's learning more about yourself and about the world and just making it so it makes more and more sense. It just gives you a lot of knowledge and certainty in what you're doing so that you can handle it confidently. It's a, an amazing toolbox. It's, it's the technology. It's very effective. It really jumped my grades from being, you know, B plus, A minus to solid A's. He was walking around going, oh my gosh, oh my god, how did you do that, how did you do that? And she was blown away. He was going like, what did you what just happened? Because you're helping someone with something that they never, ever, ever thought they would fix. It's just doing the right thing, basically. Being a Scientologist is basically being someone who helps. Pretty much any natural disaster that happens, there are Scientologists that are helping. You know, 9 11, the tsunami. We were in downtown New Orleans. I was helping uh, firemen and policemen. Passing out 
20 pound rations of ice and food and you're just not sleeping. Just helping like the soldiers who were there and getting everyone slept in two weeks. You know, and I wasn't just standing there looking or gaping. I was doing something. I was helping people. You actually help somebody and they go, thank you. You know, you help me. There's no better feeling than that. Part of Scientology is being responsible for the world around you. It's like you feel obligated. Yeah, you have to, to, to like, help others. It's one of the most rewarding things that you can do is help somebody. You know, he was getting off drugs and things were better. And to know that I was able to help him meant a lot to me because it's somebody that I care about. I mean, Scientology has helped me. It's helped my friends. You, you use your own integrity and what you believe is what you believe. Whatever is true for you is true for you. Whether you're Christian, Baptist, Buddhist, Scientologist. I think everybody has the right to decide for themselves and actually believe what makes sense and helps them through life. People who stand up and say, yeah, I'm proud to be this or I'm proud to be that. I'm proud to be a Scientologist. I know what this religion has done for me. I mean, we're young, we go to the movies, we, you know, we study Scientology and it's just something, it's another part of our lives. This, yeah. this is our religion. Yeah. It's, that's what I am. I am a Scientologist. I am a Scientologist. I'm a Scientologist. I'm a Scientologist. I'm proud to be a Scientologist. It makes me really hopeful that there can be change in the world, you know, even if it's as small as one person. Beliefs and practices. Scientology is a religion that contains tools and methods to assist you in finding your own answers to life's questions, your own truths about your life and you. But who are you? Are you a body? Well, let me ask you this. If you have your appendix removed, does your personality change? Are you any less you? Of course not. When you talk about the parts of your body, you probably say, this is my arm, this is my leg. These are my hands. You instinctively know that your body is something that you have, not what you are. Your body is something you use. So if you're not your body, what are you? Your mind? Well first, what is the mind? Your mind is something you use to figure things out. It is far more accurate than any computer. It has a memory bank containing pictures all the memories of everything that's ever happened to you. When you think of something, you get a picture of it. But if you can see these pictures, even when your eyes are closed, then what is it that's looking at the pictures? It's you. You are a being, an intelligence, a consciousness, that part of you that is aware of being aware. In Scientology, we use the word think. The term Thetan is taken from the Greek letter Theta, which is long served as a symbol for thought or spirit. We use Thetan to avoid confusions with other concepts and beliefs regarding the soul or spirit. It isn't something you have. You wouldn't say, my Thetan. You'd simply say, me. You have a body. You have a mind. You are a Thetan. Scientology offers tools you can use to increase your abilities and reach your full potential in life. For the subject of Scientology is you. Yeah, so I'm going to show you a video um, that's going to explain like a couple of things on the graph. Yeah. Okay. Right. Don't worry. Yeah. Why does someone who is doing well in life suddenly worsen or begin to fail? It's almost as if some people are living their life on a roller coaster. Great interview. Thank you. You'll be hearing from us very soon.
They're up one day. Thank you very much. And down the next. Why does life sometimes seem so stressful? And what causes us to become uncertain about our abilities or our goals? Matt, what are your thoughts on this? I don't know. Well, there is an explanation for this behavior, and it has nothing to do with bad luck or fate. Each of these people is experiencing suppression. In other words, someone is trying to squash them, hold them back, or make them fail. The truth is, there are certain people who are actively trying to prevent the rest of us from doing well. So, it's time to start applying for colleges. Have you given any thought to this? Yeah, I'd actually like to get a degree in chemical engineering. I'm interested in researching environmentally friendly biofuel technology. So much so, that if you have a purpose or a dream in life, they will squash it. Really? Years of study. I'm looking at your grades and I see that you have some aptitude for science, but everyone knows that's a highly competitive field. Have you considered your other options? How about community college? So how can we tell who these people are? Well, there are in fact only two types of people. The social personality and the antisocial personality. And in Scientology, it was discovered that each have very different but identifiable behavior patterns. For example, the social personality, by nature, wants to survive well, and wants others to survive well too. Whereas the antisocial personality thinks all other people are his enemies, to be openly or secretly destroyed. Hey! You've dropped your wallets. You see, they don't trust people to a point of terror. Since crime and criminal acts are committed by the antisocial personalities, it's this second type that is the root of most trouble. And unfortunately, they tend to go undetected. Eve, I just had the best interview. I really think I'm gonna get this job. They really like me. That's my new dress. And? Uh, I haven't even worn it yet. Wow. While their actions are calculated to be destructive, Calm down, Em. They appear quite rational. You always make a big deal out of nothing. And they can be very convincing. It's just clothes. I'm sorry, you're right. Have a good time. It looks really pretty on you. I know, right? <laughs> Thanks. Their basic intent is to keep others down. So they compulsively and cleverly do just that. Did you hear? They say there's going to be layoffs, budget cuts, and if your teachers aren't cutting it. Has anybody seen the sugar? Artists in particular are magnets for these people who view their art as something to be destroyed. So as a friend, they try to do just that. I'm awfully sorry I didn't mean to get your hopes up. Let me be honest with you. Everybody in town thinks that you're, well, just not good. Where dreams mysteriously shatter, look for the antisocial personality hidden in their midst. Why the failing grade on your test? It's as if you didn't even try. Why should I? What's the point? Even though they make up only about 20% of the population, the havoc they can wreak can be devastating. It would save us all a lot of failure and heartbreak if we could detect who these people are. Fortunately, in Scientology, it was discovered that these people can be detected simply by examining their conduct. You see, there are actually distinct characteristics that all antisocial personalities have in common. And these same characteristics, reversed, will be found in a social personality. Compare one list against the other, and you'll know which type you're dealing with. For example, an antisocial personality with a bad sense of property, and thinks that nothing is really owned. It's just clothes. But a social personality knows that property belongs to someone, and its theft or misuse is frowned upon. Here's another example. A social person is eager to relay good news, 
and tends to be specific about who said what and what exactly they said. So, great news. The voice called you a genius. Great work. Congratulations. Thank you. Whereas the antisocial personality does the complete opposite with communication. No, she's not. What is this regarding? They will not pass on good news. A job. Um, yeah, I think she mentioned something about an interview. I'll let her know you called. Oh, finally, I'm starving. I'm sorry, it was so... Good news is stopped. Did I get any calls? No. And they speak in generalities using expressions such as they say and everyone thinks. Did you remember the hot sauce? No, I forgot. Well, everybody knows you do that. While a social personality tends to reassure those around him. You're one of my top students. I know you can do this. The antisocial person deals mainly in bad news. Did you hear? They say there's going to be layoffs and critical or hostile remarks. You always make a big deal out of nothing. Furthermore, the antisocial personality will alter communication to make it worse. What do you think of him? He's got some growing to do, but he shows a lot of promise. Let me be honest with you. Everybody in town thinks that you're just, well, not good. As a result, those associated with an antisocial personality tend to be unhappy and behave in a crippled manner in life. And they get sick more often than others. <coughs> On the other hand, a social personality's friends and associates tend to be well, happy, and of good morale. It's easy to see how important it is to be able to spot who these suppressive people are. Once you know who's behind your unexplained failures and misfortunes, you'll be able to change your life for the better with solutions that make those ups and downs a thing of the past. Well done. Good job. Thank you so much. All right. With these tools, you can choose your friends and associates wisely and build a better life for yourself and those around you. Once relieved of the burden of suppression, anyone can lift their head, become well and happy with life again. I'd like to introduce you all to the hottest new artist in town. Armed with this knowledge, there's no limit to how much we can all flourish. I noticed though in one of the, the videos it talked about it being a religion, but it's, it's courses as well. So, then, so it's like if it's good at all, is that right? Story. Yeah, the actual so definition of it, it's, like, it's an applied yeah. and religious yeah. philosophy across any country. Right. So, so it's like adventures. Uh, it's things about life. Because like, um, yeah, you can learn for certain areas of your life that are like, you know, a little bit disturbing or you know, give you a little bit of problems, you can yeah, get knowledge on courses to then go and use that knowledge in that area of the life so you can make it more stable. Mm. You know, maybe certain people give you some trouble or whatever, you can learn how to handle those people. Like that video up there was saying about, um, what did you call them, su su suppressive people yeah, yeah. Uh, who are sort of like actively trying to put you down. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I have encountered people like that. It's, it's probably because they are not very successful and they don't want you to be successful. Yeah. yeah. Um, although I must admit, some of the, the videos, it seemed a little bit sort of like, not forced, but, you know, the people they encountered were, they seemed like too intent on, yeah. you know, putting... People, I, I've not encountered people that intent on putting yeah. it down. You, you, you're right. You know, they're usually a lot more subtle. They're a lot more hidden. Yeah. To do it, I don't know if, if it's ever happened to you where someone says they're trying to help you, 
Right. You're, trying, you're trying to look out for your best interest. Mm. Like, let's say, if you want to, uh, <clears throat> you want to do something new. Like, I don't know. Do you want to like take up a new hobby, or do you want to take up a sport, or whatever? Yeah. So I says, are you sure you want to do that? You know, like getting on, you're getting on now in life. They're afraid you'll be successful. You know what I mean? Like more successful than them. Yeah. I think that's what it is. It's yeah. almost like they're trying to help someone, but they're stopping that person from doing what they want to do. Yeah. So they, it, it can be quite hidden sometimes. Right. Okay. But that's what the that's what the knowledge in the course helps people to do is to be able to spot or recognize when someone's trying to stop them from achieving all their goals. Yeah. Well, that's they can do. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be any good to have that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. So. This is, uh, these are the booklets. This is the booklet, and of course the suppression. Mm -hmm. And it goes over um, the social personality. Mm -hmm. And it actually gives you the 12 characteristics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of, the, of, the, of the social personality. And it also goes over Social yeah. I see this cross a lot everywhere. That that yeah. is this part is a part of Christianity then? Because that, that looks like a, a Christian cross. Yeah, it's, it, it looks like it. There's a, there's eight points to this one. <clears throat> so it's got these uh, four other ones. So it's okay. an eight pointed cross. Right. And it's a Scientology cross. Oh, right. Okay. So. Um, yeah, <clears throat> there's like um, these are different points of survival in life. Okay. Okay. And like you want to look after yourself, your body. Yeah. That's one thing of survival. Yeah. If you want to like have a family, girlfriend, whatever, that's another point of survival in your life. So say for example, if you date, you go to a girl, you buy her flowers, and you're trying to create something there, right? Mm. It's almost like your drive to have some survival, some pleasure, actually, in life. And there's, there's eight of these areas of life. Okay. Each, each area of life is represented by... Oh, uh, was that on the poster there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's like a fig, not a figure, like an infinity, infinity symbol at the bottom. Yeah. I forget the rest now. <laughs> but yeah. I remember there was eight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so same thing. Right. Yeah, eight areas of life. So. Oh, and these are all written by L100, all of yes. these? Well, these are taken ghost from... ghostwritten? No, no, these... these he are, actually wrote them. He wrote this, like, these words are in here written by him. Um, these are taken from different writings of his and compiled in books yes. on certain okay. subjects. So this one is on suppression. Right. You know, how to recognize a social person, how to recognize an antisocial person, and it gives you um, some... Uh, exercises you can do like you can get familiar with how to recognize these people in your life a pts person yeah is that something different uh it's called potential trouble source oh someone who causes trouble yeah yeah so you'll find out like in here just how someone can become pts okay like you know if you're the guy is going across these stats his production is doing quite good, right? Yeah. And then one of his colleagues comes and says to him, the word is out, they're going to fire you. Mm. So this guy is he's been quite antisocial. Yeah. It might not even be true, right? I've met people like that. Yeah. Right. And so exactly another consequence of what happens, this guy's at work and he's got this guy in his mind. It's yes. all this stuff. Right? <laughs> if it happens to his production and he gets ill. Yeah. So you find a PTS person is someone who can, goes up and down in life and can get ill sometimes. Yeah. You know? But it's being able to recognize these guys and learn how to handle them mm. in life. That's what this is about, isn't okay. it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cool. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, it's, a, it's phenomenal. That's, that's what really comes up in the graph here. These, you see these points here? Yes. This is um, on your happiness level. Yeah. Okay. And on your active level. And these clouds show that it changes. Like your happiness can be quite good sometimes, but then sometimes it's not good. So yeah. Quite sad and depressed. So it, it changes, so it goes up and down like this. Yes. You know? And your active level is doing the same. 
So how you view in your life is like it's kind of like a roller coaster that's going yeah. up and down. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. And this is this is the the technology that helps people to overcome those ups and downs. Is that part of the technology? This machine here, because that looks very high tech. Yeah. There's, there's one downstairs as well. Um, looks a bit retro as well, doesn't it? As well. Yeah, it does. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's the newest version. Uh, it's just been designed. Ultra Eight. Yeah, Ultra Eight. Ultra Seven is not the third. This is the mark. We call it a hybrid professional mark Ultra Eight. He didn't. He didn't invent this, did he? Yeah. This is what. Yeah. Oh. It's the technology that so electronics. Yeah. Have only just become available to make this version. Wow. He already had the specs done way back in the past, but the, the, the electronics have only just become available to create this device. So you use machines like this as part of um, um, the courses? Different ones? Yeah, different ones. Like, um, yeah, they do different things. Like, um, for example, um, if you um, say, for example, if someone's got a, a, a loss in their life. Yeah. Okay. This machine is used to see when the person is actually relieved of that experience. It will actually, if the person thinks about that experience, say the mom died, right? Yeah. Then it will show up on the meteor. It will actually, the, the needle registers. It goes, the person thinks about it and goes, I'll actually show you how it works. But like, anyway, this, this guy here, mm -hmm. once I get this book oh, Okay, down, thank you. So how does, how, I don't understand how your thoughts get hmm. into that. I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay, do, do, I, want, do you want to put your bag down? Okay. Let's, let's do a demonstration. Um, yeah. So this is a battery operated device. I think my battery. I'm not hurt with that. We're going to give it a push on. <laughs> it's against our principle. No, no, no. no, no. Right, yes. So, <clears throat> what this machine does is it will register on pain. Like a loss. You know? Yeah. So, I'm going to do, I'm going to do what's called a stress test. I should show you first, okay? Do you hold comfortably? What I'm going to do now, I'm going to do what's called a pinch test. Okay. okay? I'm going to pinch your finger, your hand here, to inflict some pain. Okay, but not too much. Okay, I promise. But we're going to see how that pain yeah. then registers on you. This is more real, it's more kind of like a... Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So, I'm just going to give you a pinch here. Okay. Just for this. Okay, can you feel that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, Mark. So, what I'm going to ask you now, is recall the actual moment of the pinch. You see? You see it goes up like that? Nothing about it? Okay. So it's just easy. Now, okay, now do it again. Recall the exact moment of that pinch. You see, you see it goes up there. Yeah. Okay? And if, so if we do this over and over again, that little reed should get smaller and smaller. Okay, so if you recall, recall the moment of the pinch. See, it's still there, right? Mm. Okay, so as you think about that pain, that thing, yeah. it shows up on this meter. Yeah. Okay, so let's do it again. So recall the exact moment of the pinch. See, so it's, still, it's still got that same read. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that's... That's what like this device is used for. It's actually used to help someone to recall experiences. And if there is pain associated with that experience, and it's shown the meter, and it's used then to talk with that person about that experience, yeah. and to get them to get the pain off it. Oh, by sort of overthinking by like counseling. Yeah, it's like a uh, it's called auditing, but it's a very exact procedure that's followed. Um, to actually help the person then to become free of that experience, okay. like they become like, oh, they get relief from it. But it's, it's an exact procedure. Mm. Okay? Yeah.
Okay. It's pretty cool, right? It's <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. It was like it was reading my mind. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so it's an aid to help locate those hidden experiences. <laughs> All right, got to run. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I'll you I'll send you an email. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not in London yeah. a lot, but like once a month or twice a month, you know. Yeah, right. I only live in Proxley, which is just, just in Hertfordshire there. Yeah. So. Right, where is that? It's near Watford. Near Watford. Northwest. Northwest. It's not really that far away. <laughs> okay. Jay, anytime you're in the area, you're welcome to pop in and see yeah. how you're doing, you know, we're good to hear. All right, yeah, sure. Okay, that was, that was amazing, man. <laughs> yeah. Thank great. you so much, Gunnar. Thanks again. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, right. So that was my second adventure in Scientology in the little Dianetics Centre in London, Tottenham Court Road. Uh, it's not that little, as I've discovered. There's the main floor where you can walk in. There's little video displays and books and stuff. And symbols everywhere on the wall. Uh, there's a downstairs where I did my little multiple choice. I, I say little again. It's about 200 questions. Uh, and I was taken upstairs to a small cinema, very posh, red velvet seats, the whole bit. And uh, I was the only one there. <laughs> And they showed me that five-minute film about suppressive people. Uh, that's something I've heard about. They call them SPs. I thought they only used that term terminology once you were well in, when you found out there were people criticizing you or criticizing the so-called religion. Uh, they're called SPs or PTSs, potential trouble source. But I was told about that right away. I don't know if uh, he was trying to tell me something, <laughs> like he'd figured me out. Uh, no, I don't think so. But yeah, I gave them my name, my address, my telephone number, all of which are false. So the next thing to do is to go to the Scientology Church in Blackfriars, which is huge. I wonder what I will discover there.